and go into configure terminal mode. Enter the login command once more and hit the question mark. And we can see right here the origin ID. When I add an origin ID to the syslog messages, if I bring hit a question mark after origin ID here. You can see we've got three options, actually four, we can hit enter and that'll add the uh, IP address on there. We can specify to use the host name and that will add the R1 tag on there. We can specify the IP address or we can specify a string where we can define what we want that particular string to be. I'm going to use that option just because it allows a little bit more flexibility. And uh, if I hit a question mark, you'll see it just says enter word or whatever you want that string to be. And we'll call this r1 underscore log and hit enter. I'm going to create some more uh, messages here. Go into the interface loopback zero and do a shut and then a no shut, generate the messages and I'm going to back out and turn that back into the switch to generate some more messages here. Okay, I'm going to go back to the log, scroll all the way down to the bottom since those are the most recent and we can see right here just uh, compare the messages that were received from the router prior to adding the origin ID tag. We have just a full message here, the loopback zero ch changed state to up. And we scroll down to the more recent messages and you can see it adds the R1 log, the string that we specified onto it. And you can see it's coming from router one. And then on the switch, you can see the telnet traffic and it's untagged. So a, a easy way to, like I said, differentiate between the traffic that's coming across there and the, the log messages that are being uh, appended to the file. And the file that we were sending it to was the, uh, it's in the C, TFTP under Cisco. Uh, let me do away with some of these files here and the logging document if I scroll all the way down to the bottom here you can see right here we've got the messages with the origin ID tag and then the telnet messages from the switch very very simple just a few lines of configuration and code there to get that uh, service up and running and become very useful as a tool for us. To demonstrate some of the TFTP services, I'm going to go on to the switch A and send the uh, running configuration as well as back up my iOS. And that will be sent to this folder as well. So I bring up the Telnet connection to switch A and uh, go into configure terminal mode. Actually, I'll do it from the mode here. If you know anything about uh, Cisco routers, switches, or devices, the copy running config to startup config. This is essentially just going to copy the running configuration to the startup configuration. Same uh, basic principle as the uh, write mem. But if I just bring back all the way down to the copy command here and hit question mark, you can see you can copy from any of these potential sources to any of these potential destinations. I just want to view the flash real quick and show you what we have listed under the flash directory. You can see the iOS, uh, private config, the running config or startup config and the VLAN data file. If I do that on the router, I just want to show you why I'm doing it from the switch and not the virtual router that's running in GNS3. If I do a show flash, there's no files in the flash memory. Uh, I can't send that iOS. I can't send the running config. 
and I can't view the files. I just wanted to use the switch here to show you what it should look like on uh, an actual real-world device where you're going to have these files listed. And it's quite possible that you'll have a lot more uh, files listed there. I want to start out by sending the config.txt over to the TFTP server. And I'll enter copy flash. You can do this two ways. I can either enter flash colon and the file name and then I want to send it to TFTP or if I just do copy flash colon and then TFTP colon it's going to ask me for the file name which is config.txt next it will ask me to specify the server where I want to send that file that's 192.168.1.100 and finally I want to I want to use that same name the config.txt and you can see it successfully sent that file over there is 14 uh, 1849 bytes if I bring up my folder here we can see I launch it in notepad and it looks like a jumbled mess so I'm actually gonna launch it in wordpad I just wanted to show you what it looks like uh, it might happen like that on your computer it might not I like to use WordPad because it's going to show up how it's properly formatted. And we can see here the running configuration that we have uh, added. Actually, that is the startup configuration. If I do a copy run start, and then redo this resend that file over and bring it up again here you can see the login messages those weren't those weren't on that previous file that I sent over because that was the startup configuration not the running configuration